Hello and welcome my partners in crime, welcome back to Murder Analyze and welcome back for another true crime. Now today's crime again, okay I probably put a bit of warning out with this one, I should have probably with yesterday's one. This does um, bring up the murder of a 24 day old baby, right, by its father. Now here's this person is called Jordan uh, Monaghan and he is a serial killer, right. But that's what's sort of going to be in this um, video today. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up on that. That's what's going to be in it. Anyway, let's deal with the facts of this case, really, because it's a really interesting case. Um, it, but as I said, it is to deal with um, two children, actually. The murder of two children and the attempted murder of a third. Right, the third child... I'm going to tell you now, I can't mention the name for legal reasons, so we're only going to be talking about the two children, him, uh, the ex-girlfriend that he murdered, and the mother of the two children, which is absolutely distraught, really, as you can imagine, of losing two children to this man that she had no idea was like he was. So this is the case of Jordan Monaghan. Now, he is a British serial killer, and he murdered his girlfriend, um, his, his 24-day-old baby, his 21-month-old son and attempted to murder another child of his. Again, cannot mention the name or anything about that child. On January the 1st, 2013, Monaghan smothered her old daughter, Ruby, at their Blackburn home. On the 17th of August, 2013, literally a few months apart from the first killing of um, little Ruby, he then... Um, killed uh, little Logan and Logan Monaghan he smothered him his 21 month old son uh, while they were alone in a changing room cubicle at Waves Water Centre in Blackburn and we'll go into the reasons why in a minute I'm just going to give you the outline of this case then on October the 24th 2019 Monaghan poisoned his 23 year old girlfriend Evie Adams at Blackburn. Now the post-mortem examination concluded that Ruby died from um, acute or so Ruby was 20 was a 20 day 24 day old child who they assumed as usual um, because when there's no marks or no nothing and you've got a 24 day old child that's just you know found in their crib dead then, you know, they put it down to uh, bronchial pneumonia. Um, and um, really, so he sort of got away with that murder, okay? He, at first he did. Then, um, with Logan's um, cause of death, where he's took him to this changing room and he's smothered him there, again, this because it was there wasn't enough evidence or circumstance around, so because you had one child die already within this family in what they classed at that time was un, unsuspicious, you know, it wasn't suspicious in any way um, it, it happens, okay. Um, they then really um, put it down to an unexplained death. They couldn't understand why this boy had died because he died actually in a public place. It wasn't like it was in a room, but he was in a cubicle, right. Um, so that's sort of how he got away with so long the two murders of his children and then um, it's quite sad really isn't it really when you think this man has been killing these kids and this poor mother you know the girlfriend who lived with him um, had had to go through the death of her youngest daughter her new, her new baby 24 days that's all she had with that child who was a perfectly well and healthy child and then the 21 month old son that she lost literally months apart. It's, it's just, you can imagine, can't you, the heartache of this poor girl. And they, they sort of couldn't put it down to anything, so they put the boys, it's like genetics, right? So it was a genetic wheel or something, and it does happen a lot. It does. Well, not a lot, but it happens. And really, they said then, or it was just natural causes, he, he, just, he just died. So why... So they arrested him because the other stuff come to light and I, I think there was always suspicion but with the, if a coroner's report comes back with nothing, 
you know, there's nothing you can do, right? People may have theorised about you know, two children so close in time dying and that, and then nothing after that. And that relationship ended, and I'll, we'll go into that in a minute because that's important to the death of the of um, little Logan, the 21 month old. Um, I don't, I don't know the relevance or any. I can't find any relation to why he would kill the 24 day old baby. And there wasn't anything that triggered that, but there was certainly something that triggered the death of Logan. So then he's been arrested, but he's out on bail. Right, this is in 2018. And while on bail for this children's murder, and the only reason he would have been out on bail, and I, I know because I would have usually have slated this police by now, but if they haven't got enough evidence and they're trying to, they've arrested him, they want to charge, they've charged him, right? So they've arrested him and they've charged him with that, but they're trying to gather this evidence, right? So they're trying to put a case together. They've released him out on bail. He's, he's been with this uh, E.V. Adams for a little while. The girlfriend and then she was found dead and um, it looked like suicide right but now what you have to think is you've got a man haven't you who is now linked in what in in you know in, in very <laughs> he's got very close connection to three deaths in quite a short time because the, the kids were 2013, we're talking about 2018, aren't we? Uh, 2019 really, that he's committed a crime again. Now, if that's a long gap for someone who's a serial killer. So I think there's a lot more about this man that we don't know to tell you the truth. But anyway, this Evie's been found and um, it looks like, and he says, they found a suicide note, but well, it turns out she hadn't took her own life because we have such a thing as toxicology and different stuff like that. And it, it showed, really, that um, <laughs> the mindset of this man, because he's had to give her a, he's give her a cocktail, really, of all the drugs and God knows what else. And he's killed her. He's killed her. And he's probably killed her for the same reason that I think he killed Logan. You see, when he killed Logan, then a few months after uh, the death or the murder of little Ruby, he, um, he turns out that he had this massive gambling problem. He had a lot of people, a lot of money, actually. And the girlfriend, the mother of the children, was or, you know, sort of, I don't think she ever thought he did anything to them children. I don't think she believed that until then, really. But I think she'd lost her child. Then you find out, so she'd lost Ruby. Then you find out, right, that you have a man that you're with that spent every penny you've got on gambling. And she didn't realise that he had killed her, this young baby. She thought it was like what well, everyone else thought. It was a cot death. Natural causes, really, or, or unknown causes, should we say. And so that's why she allowed this man to, to still live with her and take a shot, you know, and take this kid out and go do everything with this kid and take this kid swimming to where this child wasn't even suffocated then, because once all this sort of stuff come out, they re-examined then the evidence and found that it was suffocation that Logan died from. There was a reason. And the reason why I think he killed Logan at that point, because the mother, the girlfriend at the time, she wanted out the relationship, she told him the relationship's over because of the extent of his gambling. Plus she was already in grieving over losing a child, right? I mean, he come across as this grieving man. He did. He wept. Absolutely wept over the coffins of these children. Every, every time anyone ever spoke to him, the press spoke to him. He was the grieving 
father. He was the person that was most distraught over this. This woman, I don't think, even had a chance to grieve before the next child had died. So you can imagine the state of this woman was in. So she tells him, right, after this first, a few months, about two days before Logan's death in the August of 2013, that she's had enough of him. She doesn't want to be with him anymore. She, she just can't do it anymore. She just wants to be on her own with her child and stuff. That's all she wants. Two days later, Logan is dead. And then what happens is, because then they think it's, you know, genetics or whatever, there's no real reason for the death, that then makes her need him more. So he isn't leaving now, he's staying. But even that doesn't keep her with him in the end. That's too much. And in the end they break up, because now this girl's got nothing, has she? She's lost both her children to this man and doesn't even know it. He doesn't, she doesn't even know it yet. Then he goes off, he meets other people, and then eventually meets Evie, and then kills her with a tragic overdose of medication that he done to deliberately kill her. He murdered her, because probably she was going to leave him as well. Because this man was nothing but a liar, and a cheat, a gambler, that spent every penny, everything was about him, everything. Even the death of these children he used to his own advantage, even though he is the one that killed them. And this is what this man is like, this Georgian Monaghan. That's what he was like. So God knows how many more people this man has killed. Because anyone, anyone with this mentality that could kill and kill and kill and had shown no remorse at all, actually want you to feel sorry for them enjoys it and will kill someone to keep you, even your own child. It's a terrible case to know this, really, when you think so many people have been hurt and murdered by some man's ego to want to keep you. It's, uh, you know, I, 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 when I look at this mum, you know, and these crocodile tears and stuff, and, and, and he got away with it for so long as well. I mean, so long, didn't he? So he just, he really did it. It's just, it's, it's a shocking case to me. This was a beautiful baby girl, his child that he murdered. Then he went on to murder, murder Logan. And then he went on to try and murder the third child. Now, we don't know anything about this child, so we don't know whether this child was with the first woman he was in a relationship, and I can't, I've got her name, and I've actually put it on a slide. Um, I think it's Grey, something Grey, but anyway, she's on the slide, the mother of these children. So I don't know if it's one of her children, if it's somebody else's children, because remember there is a gap between the murders in 2013 and the murder of Evie in 2018. There's this gap. Now he is a serial killer. He's a typical serial killer. Right? This is what he is. So that's a long gap, isn't it? So the third child come, would come into that gap, I would think. But that's the one we know about. A lot of these children were murdered, really, with a lot of people, a lot of professional people, not understanding how at first, because they wasn't looking for it. So how many more has this man killed or been in the position to try and kill within this time span? This man is a very dangerous man, very, very dangerous man indeed. And um, I, I can only feel really sorry for the people that were affected in any way by this man or in this man's life, because I think wherever this man has been, there would be heartache that this man would leave behind. They really would. It's, it's a really shocking case, this, of some person, serial killer, who was just really nearly got away with murder. So I think it's Laura Gray is the mother, and she's the one, she's the mother of the children, the two children that uh, were, died. And I think she's, she discovered um, 
about eight months after Ruby's um, death that he did owe thousands of pounds of gambling and I think she actually puts then down the death of Logan to that and this is what I was saying we can put down you can sort of pinpoint right why he murdered in certain cases right like with Logan you can pinpoint that she's found this out she wants the relationship over so he's murdered her son which makes her need him more right so we can understand from his psychopathic faults of how he thought things were going to play out if I kill this boy she's going to want me she's going to need me so why Ruby baby he murdered while the mother was asleep upstairs she was in her crib why though what was going on in that mind of his then because she wasn't planning on leaving him then was she? Is it because he just couldn't handle that child? Did she cry too much? Was that responsibility too much? Did the gambling debts get to him even then before anything else? You know, what, you know, serial killers kill for reasons, but they also can be triggered by stress, by anxiety, by new babies. A lot of serial killers, when they're partners have had children or they're pregnant really go off on a tangent and start to really kill so it could have just been that bit of jealousy from the baby you know he's jealous of this child the stress of it the commitment the stress he's got to try and be good this sort of thing sometimes and this is what triggers them there's a lot of serial killers we've had a lot I think Gary Ridgway actually even put his son didn't he in the back of the car while he was out raping and murdering right I think um what's his name um oh, I've done so much on him um pitchfork he had his child new baby in the back of the car remember he dropped the wife off didn't he at the college where she was teaching he got back in his car this baby like nearly newborn baby he went out and he raped and murdered there's a trigger there and I think this is probably the only reason why he killed Ruby it was a trick that urge he had to do it he couldn't have stopped doing it but I think Logan was brought on because he's going to teach her a lesson she's going to need me because I'm going to take this boy and that's exactly what he did that's exactly what he did listen this man's a nasty piece of work but if you're trying to ever understand why a serial killer did did something it's so difficult because serial killers do things for different reasons they have different fetish different things but I think with Ruby I think the only thing we can really think of is um, is maybe that's what the trigger was the actual stress and anxiety of being a new dad and everything else he couldn't handle it he couldn't handle it like he couldn't handle being rejected being left that triggered him that triggered him so there's a lot of things with this man which makes this man a very dangerous man. So listen, he's a, he was a construction worker at, um, at the time and, and you know, we, we talk about serial killers and we did, don't we, and we say, do they, do they can't, can't hold down jobs, they're this, they're that, they're not educated, they are educated, they're highly educated, they've got a high IQ. Sometimes they're just ordinary people, right? Who just don't fit any of that list they don't. They're just normal until they're not. Or they're not to us. Right? So this man was a construction worker. Uh, he was arrested in the January for all of the murders. Um, the child that luckily survived and I think he attempted to kill that child twice. Right? So he was charged with two counts of attempted murder in relation to the third child and again as I said can't be identified for legal reasons the judge called him this cruel uh, exceptionally controlling cruel selfish man uh, but he was you know this you know he just he done, he done all this he faked everything else he, he murdered his own children he murdered kids um, for his own sadistic pleasure Right, really, he did, he did. He smothered him, 
he didn't care about them, there was no remorse there, never has been. The, the tears that he cried were crocodile tears and he was, uh, you know, really, that should tell you something really when you see these people and they're dying over this coffin, you know, they're either really, really grieving or they're really, really guilty about something and he was really, really guilty. Anyway, it was a 10 week trial at, Crown, at Preston Crown Court and I think he got 40 years. I think with his suicide note, <laughs> this is how dramatic this man was and how he wanted to be seen as the most grieving person. When Evie was being, or Evan was being buried on the coffin, he had a photo of them, right, up on the coffin, what he said was their favourite photos together. And the suicide note fell out of that in front of everybody, you see. So that's how people really believed that she committed suicide. And it wasn't until much later on that um, it was found really that she didn't. But this is what this man is like, right? He'd cry at the funeral, deeply, emotionally, you know, want that you know, to you to see his grieving, he wants you to feel for him, to care for him. But he killed him. He killed them all. The man's absolutely bloody mad. It's absolutely mad. Anyway, there was a 10 week trial at Preston Colonel Court and uh, he was sentenced to he, 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 the two counts of attempted murder on this young kid, you know, the one that can't be named. Um, I think it was then the murders, there was three then murder charges on him, but the man is a serial killer. And no matter how long you give this man in prison, uh, it won't matter. Because he's, uh, he's mad. So, I mean, you know, I, the, the, the thing is with this case is that we're never going to know because he's never really going to tell you much. But I would like to find out really more about him. And I'm going to look into his background when I do a thing on the serial killers that I want to do um, about just their childhood stuff. Like I've released some stuff out about... Um, Manson but it's their childhoods you know with Manson as I said before in all these different cases you know this he, he wasn't really a killer as such right he was but he wasn't these are serial killers these are killers when you have someone that can kill their own children that can kill an innocent tiny 24 day old baby and a you know 21 month old little toddler and cover it up so well, you know, so well, and and then try and kill another child twice. You didn't succeed the first time, so you tried again. You know, shocking, really, this case. But anyway, listen. You know, this is like this Jordan uh, Jordan uh, Monaghan. You know, he's not one of the most well-known serial killers because I don't, I, you know, until more things come out about him, and I think it will in the end, or was he stopped early enough? But I'd said to you, sometimes, you know, these killers, it is a trigger, these relationships, having children and stuff, does trigger stuff, does trigger stuff. He was always a serial killer in here, always really just so when did he start was ruby his first was she, was she and was evie the last we never know will we because he isn't going to say we just have to wait and see what else comes up about him but i'm sure something will sooner or later but i'm going to have a good look at this man in quite a lot of detail and find out um where else he was and what else has happened around you know anything out of the ordinary, should I say, that has happened around that time that um, he was living in these areas. But anyway, my heart goes out actually to the mother of these children and the families of this uh, young girl that was murdered by this man. Shocking, really, it's shocking. So anyway, thanks for watching. Till the next time. Bye-bye.